Fabulous. So welcome everybody to the April 12th meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. Uh, we are meeting virtually pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, and this meeting is being uh, recorded. Uh, we have four members of the public in attendance and thanks to them for coming. So the first order is just a call to order and to get you to uh, verbally acknowledge that you're present. So I will know that you can be heard. Sean? Yes. Anika? Yes. Thank you. Sharon? Here. Christine? Here. Paul Bockelman? Present. Thank you. And I see that um, Alex Lopez is joining us. So Alex, can you hear us? Yep. Thank you very much. And I'm Austin Sarrett. Okay, the first item is the approval of minutes from uh, March 29th. And uh, those minutes, I take it, are now available to us. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to um, look at them. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you, Paul. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, is there any uh, need to revise, change? Uh, take a minute if you haven't had a chance to, to look at them. Minutes from the 29th of March. Okay, are we ready to go on the minutes? Okay, I'm gonna ask you to, again, uh, signify your approval of the minutes, Sean? Yes. Anika? Yes. Thank you, Anika. Sharon? Yes. Thank you, Paul? Yes. Christine? Yes. And Alex Lopez? Abstain. And Austin votes yes. And Angie, thank you so much for the preparation of the minutes. Next item in number three um, is the financial update, Sean. Sure. Um, so we sent out the designer contract after the last meeting. Um, it is with the designers now and we expect it'll be signed maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Um, and so we've been in contact with them just to see what the status is, but um, the last update is that they're reviewing it now. Um, so hopefully between now and the next meeting, we will have that fully executed and the designers will be with us at the next meeting. And I guess the other update is we are, um, we met with our uh, financial advisor on the, the financing for this project. We're moving forward as if we're gonna borrow this June. Um, mm -hmm. And so the, the positives of that is that again, it locks in an interest rate, gives us a, uh, you know, a number we can count on um, and kind of mitigates against future risk of interest rates rising. Um, so we're in that process now. It'll be a lot of work to, to get it all together, but um, our treasurer will take care of a lot of that work um, and we'll update this committee on, on when that's finalized. That's great. Thank you. Sean, there's an item uh, which I think is gonna be a standard part of our agenda, uh, review and approval of invoices. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, is there anything to say that isn't straightforward about what that will entail? So I think at this early phase, um, and I'll just tell you what we do with the school building committee. Great. At this early phase, the invoices will be pretty um, straightforward in terms of we have contracts, there, um, the, there will be sort of a regular billing rhythm to, the, to how those contracts work. Um, and so what we're proposing is that when we have invoices, we will bring them to the committee, um, uh, our OPM or the, or the designers here can explain, you know, what was done, if, answer any questions, and then the committee will vote on it. Um, at some point, as we move into construction phase, the invoices get a little bit more complicated and, you know, there may be things like change orders and, and those types of things. At that point, we might want to consider some sort of um, uh, subcommittee or some, some other process to review those more complicated invoices and bring back, a, you know, sort of a summary to the committee. Uh, but this early phase, I think it, they're straightforward enough where the whole committee can just review them and approve them together. Great, thank you. 
Paul or Colliers, do you want to add anything about the invoice process? No, Not I think what Sean recommends is perfect. And and awesome. So we do have one invoice um, that I'll pull up on the screen that we can uh, review with the committee today. Great. And, yeah. Thank you, Sean. Are we doing it now? Sorry, are we at that yeah. end? Okay. Yeah, we are. Sure. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, at the school building committee, it's always at the very end. So no, we're, we we want to we want to pay the bills right up front. All right, let me share the screen. And so uh, this first invoice is from Colliers. Um, it's for services rendered through the end of February. Um, as I talked about, there's sort of a, a rhythm to the different phases of the project and how much will build be billed each month. Um, and I'll turn it over to, to Ken or Craig if they want to just explain sort of what, maybe give an overview of the types of services that were performed um, for this invoice. Thank you. Sure thing. Actually, um, Ken, are you on? Uh, I'll kick this over to you since I believe yep. you are, you're more familiar with this, but in uh, future meetings, I'll be the one reviewing these with you guys. Sure. So as you can see that this is broken out by, by the, the various phases of the project right now. So we've got the design phase, which is going to be essentially encompassing the next year or so of, of timing. And then the, the bid phase, which is typically two or three months worth of fee. And then we get into the construction phase, which you see is, uh, is again, an uptick in the, in the dollars per, per month. And that's because there will be uh, obviously more individuals involved in the product during construction phase and, and um, you know, more boots on the ground during the day. Um, overseeing the construction of the, of the project. And then we get into the occupancy and closeout phase, which is a, again, reduced, a reduced amount of, of oversight because we're just looking to just complete the project, close out, get close out documents into the, into the, um, to the owner's um, possession and, um, and, and do the final closeout with the MDLC. So we're in design phase right now. So a lot of the work that's happened over the past couple of months um, is really centered around um, Getting the design team on board, doing the contract negotiations with the with the with the uh, design team, getting back up to speed, et cetera. So that's that's really what's uh, what's been um, happening um, over the last uh, uh, last month or so. Great, and all of this just to, to add to that, all of this ties to um, the contract proposal that we executed with them. So that um, uh, sorry, let me go back to the invoice. There it is. So this total bottom line is the subtotal of the amount that we um, that we execute, executed agreement for. So this invoice is for ten thousand nine hundred and seventy eight dollars. Am I reading it correctly for one month's work? Correct. That's correct. Okay. So uh, Sean, just so I'll be able to see folks, give you yeah, thanks. So questions about the first of all, Sean, would you just clarify for me? Uh, what we are asking the billing committee to do is to approve the payment of those invoices so that it then goes through your the town process. Is that right? Yeah. So I'll maybe for today, I'll make a motion to authorize this first invoice and we'll second and then the rest of the committee will will give their vote. Great. And that'll, and so that'll the, be the process we follow. Great. So why don't you why don't you move it and then we'll get a second and then we'll have a discussion if there's any discussion needed. Sean? So I move that the committee approve the Collier's invoice for uh, services provided through February 28th of 2022. Second. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions or discussion of the invoice? So I, I just wanna mention, you know, we think it's important to bring these invoices to the committee itself, as opposed, I mean, some committees will delegate it to the finance director or somebody just to approve them, but. It, with the school building committee in this one, we feel that this is such an important project that we want the committee to be well aware of what the finances are as we move forward through this process. Great, I appreciate it. I think it also makes it a little more transparent to the public uh, mm -hmm. how, how, how it's going. I, I, I appreciate that. Okay, any other questions or thoughts about the invoice? Okay. I appreciate the transparency as well, thank you. Thank you, Anika. Okay, let's vote on approval of the um, of the invoice. Uh, Sean, yes. Anika, yes. Sharon, yes. Paul, yes. Christine, yes. 
Alex? Yes. And Austin votes yes. And thank you to Colliers for the work that you um, that you have already um, that you've already done. And Sean, thanks for helping us uh, through the invoice approval. Okay, the next <laughs> next item is number four on the list, and that's a report from Colliers. Yes, thank you, Austin. Um, so the first thing I want to talk a little bit about is the schedule. Now that we have uh, Feingold Alexander on board, we can start um, the phase that's called schematic design. So that phase is um, mostly them confirming their assumptions from you know, previous um, phases, uh, incorporating some of the changes that have been recommended, working with the design subcommittee. Um, that'll be about two months. So that'll be a little bit of a sprint. So we'll do that starting you know, now mid-April through mid-June. Uh, after that, we move on to there are two more design phases, um, which are a little more intensive. So that's uh, design development. That'll be about five months. So it'll take us through November, sometime around November of 2022. Then we move into construction documentation, which is a very intensive phase. That'll be about six months long. And that'll bring us through spring, say May of 2023. At that point, um, we've got a set of documents that we'll be able to put out to bid. So um, bid phase, we assume it's going to take about 14 weeks. Um, so you could call that you know, about three months. Um, the idea being that we should, we're anticipating construction to start sometime around August of 2023. Uh, we're assuming 18 months of construction. So uh, that will put us uh, substantially complete in January of 2025. So just towing over the line into 2025. Um, FAA's schedule and their contract is a little more aggressive in those design phases. So there's gonna be a little reconciliation between Collier's recommended schedule and what they've put in there. So um, I'm hoping that for next meeting, I'll be able to reconcile that with them and present this information to you guys in a nice graphic. So we'll have a uh, graphic schedule that we can kind of follow along and see how we're making progress. Um, and so that's, that's my hope is for next meeting, I'll have that for you guys. Great. And so let's just pause a second, uh, Sean. Sorry about that. Um, Craig, when you do the schedule, um, could you know where the milestone, where the milestones would be hit? Um, just, I want to see if, you know, we're still on track to hit one per, per year, um, or if, you know, if there's going to be some, you know, gray areas where we might not hit it in that year. You're talking about the reimbursement? Yeah, the, the MBLC um, milestone, yep. the different actions that we have to hit. Yep, we'll, we'll, we'll include that. For okay. Sure. Okay, uh, any other questions about the project schedule? So I want to ask a question, uh, Xander and uh, Anika and Alex Lefebvre and I are on the, uh, the outreach subcommittee. And uh, we have hope, hoping to have an outreach event on the 1st of May. Uh, I'm just, I wonder if you can help us think about the outreach process in relationship to the schedule that you just, um, that you just um, outlined. There's not a lot of time for getting public input into the revision of the schematics, given what that schedule is. Uh, there will be time for public, uh, significant public input into design development. But I just wonder if you can just help us think about, uh, assure us that the public input when it comes is gonna be, uh, I don't know, is this a word impactful? Uh, that's that's actually uh, the perfect word. Okay. Um, yes. So uh, something I've been working with um, the design subcommittee and the outreach subcommittee and a little bit with FAA is coming up uh, with that list or parameters of what the public input um, will likely have the most impact on. Um, and so it's a series of questions, a series of statements um, to help kind of inform everybody. Um, and so the things that the public 
won't be able to modify uh, with their commentary are things like you know the the, the cost of the project, the the square footage of the project, the, the the rooms that we have in the library, all those things that you know the out the outward appearance of the library. Those are things that have already been um, committed to uh, the MBLC um, and other entities. So what the public will most be, mostly be able to influence is, are maybe some of the amenities that are happening in various spaces inside the um, library, the sort of the feel of the library. Um, they'll be able to sort of identify what types of activities uh, they would encourage them to come to the library more, um, things like that. And so those are, those are items that don't necessarily have to be decided by the end of schematic design, but rather during design development, that'll be a perfect time to be, you know, the designer is going to be looking at, you know, the interior finishes at that time um, and really fleshing out what each space has to offer. Um, so the public commentary can certainly come during design development and still have uh, be in time to make it into the design and into the eventual project. Okay. Any other questions about the project schedule? I just wanted to follow up on your question, Austin, because um, I think it's a great one. Just for clarity, uh, what I just heard is that public comment will be impactful on activities and actions, but not on the physical construction of the building. Is that right? Craig? Uh, uh, yes, Xander, that, that is, that's accurate. There are certain things that um, are already in a way set. Uh, another one that I didn't mention before, but is like a good example is, is like the sustainability goals. You know, that's something that is, uh, has been, has been um, already determined and public comment may have a, a little bit of sway, but won't necessarily um, have as much of an impact as say, you know, the, the look and feel of the uh, interior spaces. Well, suppose a member of the public has particularly insightful ideas about how to meet sustainability goals. That that's certainly something that could, um, yeah, that could, you know, come into play. So, like, if if those ideas, and that's I think why Austin we we talked about last meeting, not limiting them, not limiting those comments too much. I had said, oh, you know, we, we should, you know. Uh, give some you know real hard parameter actually i'm sorry i said the opposite i said we should let all this information flow in and then sort of decide what to do with it and um so we're, we're giving some parameters so that the, the public knows sort of where their comments will be most impactful but um yes there are, I, I i think we should allow uh or we should welcome comments of all types so that we can um you know consider them or that you guys can consider them because you're right. I, I think, I think the well, ideas come from you know unexpected places. I think one of the important things to understand is that a lot of what um, we cannot at, at this point modify a lot of the programmatic elements that the MBLC has already approved and and based the the grant on. We really can't go in and, and modify those at this point. Um, there's certain adjacencies that they are, are are sacrosanct to them as well that we want to be mindful of. So to Craig's point, we'll absolutely take all the comments in and address each of those accordingly based on all the different criteria that needs to that it needs to be able to meet in order to be able to be brought into the project. So we'll compare that against what the MBLC's needs and desires are, et cetera, um, and weigh those accordingly. Um, Cause it's it's one thing to, to talk about the, the paint finishes, but it's another thing to talk, start talking about the adjacencies and things of that nature that the MBLC will definitely have an opinion on. And their opinion, honestly, at this point is um, is pretty important. I just want to make sure that we are all on the same page. And I thought, Craig, last time you put us on the same page, but I'm afraid a little bit. We're, we welcome any and all public comment about any aspect of the library with the acknowledgement that some aspects are going to be difficult or impossible to change. But I thought, Craig, your point last time was, let's hear it all. Uh, given that we, we know that there are going to be some limits. So, and what I've understood you to say is hearing it all will be timely throughout 
the revision of the schematics and divine design development. Is that accurate? That's that's correct. Okay. And then once we get to the caveat is once we get to construction documents, at that point, um, additional comment will have very will it won't be practical to have much of an effect yeah. because the design team is focused on basically documenting, uh, translating all the ideas that have come up and been accepted by um, the library building committee and then in the in the design subcommittee and then translating that into construction documents that uh, the contractors will then bid on. So yeah, the window is really schematic design and design development to have the most impact. Great, uh, Anika. Uh, yes, this has been helpful and also um, aligned with the language that we are and will be using for the May first outreach event, where you know we're letting people know this is you know all ideas are welcome on the table, and in addition to kind of like a dream area and a dream board. We'll also have a section that can better define um, the parameters around what is and what is not um, possible. Great. So this Thank was you. it was helpful to add that. Thank you. Thank you, Anika. Yeah, Xander. Yeah, I think I really appreciate the work that's going into um, helping define those parameters because I I think it's a lovely sentiment that we're going to to hear all ideas. I think the danger is um where there is tension of folks having felt excluded from the conversation previously uh hearing all ideas with no plan to act on them can feel performative and um this should be a library that is functional uh in how it not only serves the public but reflects the public's voice um in its construction, and so I don't want that to become uh, theatrical instead of genuine. And so um, if I'm hearing this correctly, it sounds like this is a really good fire under the backside of the outreach committee because the most input that can be acted on is really in these first two months um, before the, the design stage is over, correct? Craig? I, I think... Um... I would say over the next six months is when the comments will be most impactful. Great. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Alex. Okay, any other question or comments on the schedule? All right, and then Craig, we have an item on the interim location. Is there anything to report on interim location? Um, sure, nothing really new. Um, there is a budget line item for the interim location. I think it's um, $500,000. The um, window of time when the interim location will be needed will be a little bit before construction and then all through construction to the very end until that new or renovated building is available for you guys to move in. And so um, the big idea is we'll be taking that money and spreading it out, uh, hopefully <laughs> finding a place that has, you know, where the, the, the budget lines up with sort of the rent that they'll be looking for. Uh, and there'll be a bunch of logis logistics having to do with moving in and moving out, kind of getting set up that we can we can help you guys with. Ken, was there anything else that um, we want to talk about? Yeah, just understanding what that, uh, again, what the, the size of the collection that's going to want to be relocated is going to be, the programmatic elements. Are we going to have, you know, a children's room, teen room? Or what, are, what are all those different um, programmatic elements that are going to need to, to happen in that temporary location. Uh, obviously, location is going to be very key, especially for the MBLC. They're going to want to know that it's, you know, that we've got uh, public transportation and adequate parking and all that good stuff as well. And then we'll have to start looking at, along with the design team, uh, what um, the accessibility is of the building, the structural capacity of the building for the stacks and things of that nature that are extremely heavy. Uh, so it'll, it'll, once we've got it kind of shortlisted down to a few different locations, we're going to have to look at each of those with the with the due diligence required to, to make sure that it's um, it's a satisfactory um, area for us to be able to put a temporary location in. Great, thank you. Questions about the interim location issues? Uh, I I don't have a question about this. I have a question about uh, cost estimation. Um, at what point will you be doing a new cost estimation 
to bring us up to 2022 figures? Um, so we have to, um, we've already given that request, made that request with the cost estimator. Uh, they uh, gave a small fee for sort of bringing that up to speed. And I think that was coming, it's, it's within a week or two, like it, it should be in our hands pretty soon. So uh, before the next meeting, presumably, or around the next yep. meeting. Yep. Okay. All right, great. Any other question for Colliers? Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Craig. Okay, next is the subcommittee reports. The first report is from the design subcommittee. Christine. I have nothing to report. We have, <laughs> not, we have not met since uh, March 4th, I think. Uh, but our, as you can see at the bottom of the agenda, our next meeting is this Friday at 9 a.m. Great. Um, this, uh, Christine, I just wonder, uh, Sean Colliers, uh, will, do you think we'll have a, a return from FAA in advance of that meeting or it's still not sure? Okay, good, thank you. So we don't know whether we'll hear yet back from FAA, but hopefully in advance of that meeting. When you say return, you mean um, the contract signed? Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. In, in advance of the meeting on Friday or our next building committee meeting? In advance of the meeting on Friday. Um, we're just we waiting, right? Yeah. The one thing the one thing I say I'll say is when we when they do sign it, we can turn it around very quickly on our Great. side because it's it's electronic signatures and we can process that very quickly. So um, it, we know that they've got it in their hands and they're viewing yeah, it yeah, now. So yeah, it shouldn't yeah. take long. It's it's two pages. Um, it's it's not a long. I mean, it's it's two pages of contract language plus their proposal. So um, yeah. it shouldn't take long to review. Okay. Is it the committee's expectation that FAA would be in attendance at Friday's meeting? Christine? It is my belief that they will, but maybe Craig can give some more. Uh, we're including them and we have emails. Angela has gotten the emails from them who was going to attend. Craig? Yes, I, I believe they are intending on coming to the Friday's meeting, at least you know remotely. It will, because it's a remote meeting, it's easy. Um, but I will confirm that with them. Correct. I think it would be a benefit to have them there uh, so to get those dis design discussions going uh, for real. Right. Christine? That's that's it. Okay. Hopefully they'll be there. Hopefully if they'll not, be I'm there. I'm sure we'll still have stuff to go over. Absolutely. Thank you, Christine. Next is the Outreach Committee. Alex is not present. Anika, do you want to talk a little bit about the outreach uh, conversations? Sure. Uh, so uh, the flyers are circulating and the volunteers and participants are coming in. We're gathering folks um, so far. I mean, well, as you know, for people who have seen the flyers coming out, we've uh, uh, Sammy the Owl is a nice spring update um, and is out there. We So the English version is there. We have just finalized uh, Portuguese, Japanese, and then uh, Spanish and Chinese will follow, if not today, tomorrow. Um, you know, we've definitely, you know, been out, out on the field. Um, we're reaching out to people who are on both sides of the event. Um, you know, some names that, are, that will be joining us, participating with tables. We have Deborah Bridges, we have Meg Gage, Dr. Melkar Shabazz, we have Michelle Miller and PD Ur Miller. I mean, it's really shaping up. We, um, Alex actually reached out to I believe it was, uh, Terry Johnson as well, who I think was on the heavy side of saying no to the library. So we, pro you know, we may even need to recruit a couple of folks that were for the library. Um, but we're having a balance and also, you know, really focusing on, uh, you know, people who community members who were not involved in, you know, the uh, the previous uh, five years or they haven't been here, reintroducing and just, you know getting out there. Um, I actually attended, there was um, an event that the Progressive Coalition of Amherst had, which was at uh, Hazel's Restaurant, a new restaurant for us all to support. And um, where Amel Shabazz talked about this um, outreach event as well, and just really encouraging people that this would be the time to come 
and you know have your ideas and, and vision heard and really just you know meet people and uh, get people excited about the project. So um, you know for, for the most part everyone has just really embraced this and even as I'm checking out, I can see that there are a few other emails of folks who are excited to to join us on the first as well. So right. yes, I believe that that's where we are so far, and we're still pushing along to make this you know the most fabulous event that we can. Thank you, Anika. Thanks for your work on it so far, Christine. I'm not on that uh, subcommittee. Um, is there a way that, or where can I find these posters or announcements or communication about when these meetings will be? Anika? Oh, so we should de definitely make sure, you know, excuse me, that at least everyone here absolutely has these yeah. flyers. Um, and um, in terms of the, for the, the meetings, we are listed, um, excuse me, I believe, I'm, I'm not sure that our next meeting is posted as of yet, excuse me, if it is. I'm not sure that it'll be next week, but we can certainly um, get this information. Oh, we also, let me say one other thing, we met with the uh, community participation officers um, and they were incredibly helpful and, you know, we're really going to be coordinating with them. They'll be looking out, um, you know, for just different events that are going on summer, all summer long to make sure that, you know, where appropriate, we'll have presence and, um, you know, re reaching out is especially to events and areas, neighborhoods that, you know, we haven't had a presence in. Uh, so I think, you know, really between the community that we have, which is really, they're really being helpful to reach out to their networks and, to, and in partnership with the community participation officers that we're looking like we're, we're in good shape. I feel good about it. Much better than a couple of weeks ago. I'm feeling the action now. Thank you, Anika. Um, Alex, did you want to say anything uh, about the outreach effort, outreach committee? Okay, any other questions or thoughts about outreach? All right, and again, thank you to Anika and Alex and um, uh, Xander, Alex Lefebvre and Xander for the work that they're doing. I think the event on the first is gonna be just a great start for us. Uh, item number six is correspondence. I don't think we have any correspondence that we need to address. Item number seven, topics not anticipated by the chair. Uh, anything that's come up in the last 48 hours? Uh, okay, item number eight, we have five members of the public. This is uh, an opportunity for public comment. If you would, uh, member of the public, you're interested in make a comment, if you would raise your hand or otherwise signify, that would be great. Okay, I see no public comment. Again, thanks to the members of the public for attending. Item number nine is adjournment. Mr. Bachman, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yes, you do. I move to adjourn. Way to go. Is there a second? Second. second. <laughs> All right, let's vote. Mr. Bachman. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Anika. Yes. Christine. Yes. Xander. Yes. Sean. Yes. Austin votes yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate all the work and we'll see you soon. Have a good Thank you all. Thank you everyone. Good, good night. Bye-bye.